Hello Blender users, this is Blender 2.63 and today we are going to go through a tutorial that deals with almost the same tutorial as the last time part 1 but this time we are just going to build upon the previous tutorial using much more efficient models uh, using looping structures so let's start away so a sample of it was done by me last time I posted a link to this file um, we're not going to make the orbits and the lines, but we are going to create a simulation of the objects. So for now, I'm just going to copy all of most of it, and we're going to go through it step by step. Now, let me tell you, most of this is junk. It's completely unnecessary, so I'm going to remove the stuff that I don't need for now. So I need to have defined my owner. That's the owner. That's the scene object. Uh, we define the scene. Define uh, the objects in the scene. J equals. Uh, let's define our G as one for now. So let's define S as the empty list. It's an empty list, but we're going to add objects into it. Uh, this for now is unnecessary uh, and this line here is unnecessary as well so let me remind I'm just deleting a whole bunch of lines just because I use them for my project but you won't need them anyways uh, this is for setting the initial velocity let's get rid of this for now So, all right. So let's get back to line seven for x in range of length of j. Length of j is the number of objects. So in this case, it should be two. We subtract one simply because, well, the number of objects begins from uh, the definition. The number begins from zero, not from one. So we just subtract one. So in the range of the number of objects minus one. Uh, for so for every object we add a number so first one then two then three then four uh, let me take them back so first it's zero then one then two then three then four then five and so on in the next line so so that that's so that's the first thing let's print s let's print let's print after this line and see what we get zero one that's cool let's duplicate and see what we get now one two three four five six and we have seven objects over here makes sense okay so that's cool now now we can already see it's working. In fact, I'm going to get rid of all these lines from here. They're basically they're unnecessary for our purposes. So as you can see, that is it. That is pretty much how it all works. Uh, so as far as the masks go, I they are somewhat heavy, but I'm going to change that right now. Let's just remove the other objects. And let's scale this up. And let's define this as one. The mass is one as so one. It's too slow, just increase the gravitation constant. Still too slow, increase it again. And it works awesome. Now we can just duplicate any number of objects and what you'll see is that they always attract each other and form some pretty interesting patterns you can also sort of duplicate them in the Z direction it shouldn't matter uh, 
and you can see it forms a perfect nucleus like structure. So that's kind of cool there. Uh, how do we give it an additional velocity all of these? Well, to understand that, first we have to look through uh, lines n and lines 10 to the rest. So you can see for n in s, so n is a number in the number of objects in s. You remove n from the object, the reason we do that is because the object does not attract itself. So except for itself, it attracts every other object. So for x in s, for x in s, so s, so we have subtracted that given object. Uh, and so, so that it attracts every other object. Now remember, this is done not for just one object, it's done for every single object. So realistically speaking, that's a lot of calculations you're looking at. And as far as you can look at F right here, F is F is the force between the two objects, well, so we define Jx and Jn. Uh, Jx and Jn. And so, so you have multiple values of x and multiple values of n and each correspond to each other and never ever are x and n the same because if they are the same you cannot attract each other. You essentially are dividing by zero. And that's going to screw the whole thing up. Um, and then you apply J N, J N being seen objects number N, and you apply a force of F based upon the force calculated right here. In each cycle of the loop, the value of F keeps on changing. Um, and because we removed N, we have to add back. We have to add N back again into the list at the nth position in the list. So that is how we do it, and it works awesome. Okay, so that's cool. Uh, so how do we apply uh, an initial velocity? How do we give an initial velocity to all these objects? So they somewhat orbit, or you know, create somewhat of an orbit to create, you know, to get a simulation started. So for that, what we're going to do is so. So let's define. As the, let's define our first frame, which is more time less than 1 over 59. Now we remember that 1 over 60 is the first frame. One over, we just write it as 1 over 59, just for security reasons. Um, so for n in s, Uh, J N dot fly set linear velocity. Let's set linear velocity. Uh, as uh, let's just say. So for now at zero. Uh, let's start with one. They all move in the positive x direction. Or maybe not. Okay, they do. They're moving this way. So how do we get them to go in somewhat random directions? Well, you can use the random function, but what I'm going to do is sort of change its number based on based on its uh, object number so its velocity be based upon its object number and let me multiply this by a huge number it's not huge enough Okay, you can see some bot. Uh, it's 
so it is somewhat working. Uh, you can use a random function. You can working. Doesn't matter how you do it. Uh, but you have to do it. So you can add in as many objects as you like, but remember that the more objects you add, the number of calculation squares. And I've noticed that the, the maximum for mine is about uh, between 20 to 30 particles. Okay. That was strange. No, that wasn't strange. Let's just break this down to, let's say, 10 and 10 minus n. As you can see, it somewhat does a simulation. It's not perfect, but still, that gets the top jump. So, thanks for watching, and this should be it for now.